do come in, Watson. Holmes, it is good to see you. But how do you know it was me? Oh, good gracious, Holmes. Where did all this wonderful equipment come from? It all started with this, Watson. Good Lord, an electrical coil. An open wire resistance coil, in fact. And it represents 100% heat conversion. Do you remember Ohm's law? Why, every schoolboy knows it. It's I equals V over R. Or is it V equals R times I? Right, both times. And now, observe this closely. Are you looking into the future, Holmes? Uh, well put, Watson. Electricity is indeed the future. Now, as a device, this coil has two shortcomings. It is a trifle fragile and not in itself insulated. How would you solve that one, Watson? Make it stronger and um, insulate it. Exactly what the electrical engineers did. A strong metal element in a tough metal sheath. Metal sheath, Holmes? Doesn't sound very insulated. I'll explain that mystery later. Uh, kindly press that button. Uh, yes. But which one is the client? All of them, and more. With one problem in common, Watson. A simple four-letter word. Cash, Holmes? Indirectly. Uh, but the word I had in mind was heat. Ah, the first brief. B-A-C problem. High strength titanium alloy to be pressed into shapes needed for modern aircraft production. Good Lord! Flying machines! And this is where they make very special parts for them. Ah, we're going inside. Those must be the sheets of metal. Titanium alloy, extremely difficult to use. Stronger than steel, needs a very high working temperature. That must be one of the most advanced presses in Europe. Correct diagnosis once again, Watson. And unique. Three-dimensional movement. Now, observe the intense heat. Thirsty work, eh, Holmes? Working at around 800 degrees centigrade, it's little wonder. Good Lord! It seems an incredible process just to fashion such an object. If you can find another method to shape titanium without heat, the world will beat a pathway to your door. In fact, they're thinking of working it at even higher temperatures. But Holmes, where are these elements you were telling me about? Ah. Fortunately, a cool press that we can investigate. Now, do you see where they are? Bless you if I can. I'm sorry, Watson, they were concealed. There, that's better. Now you can see the terminals, kept cool by a current of air. Ah, there's one of the cartridge elements removed. Easily replaceable, though in fact they have a very long working life. They seem so small in relation to the heat produced. Well, um, as you were remembering from your school days, all electrical energy expended in a resistance wire appears in the form of heat. And as the elements are grooved into the platen, all the heat is enclosed with 100% conversion efficiency. What combustion process can match that? I see. The heat is where you want it, when you want it. Excellently put, Watson. So the client was satisfied. There are two seats aboard her whenever we wish, Watson. Can you explain the anatomy of these fellows to me, Holmes? Allow me to project some slides. Can I come in the new? No, that'll be Mrs. Hudson with one of her inimitable hot pots. Well, then I'm afraid she and it will have to wait. Uh, later, Mrs. Hudson. Suit yourselves. You will see, we are at a point of particular interest to a medical man, the chemical. And now, suppose I were to say MGO. MGO? Uh, Italian Secret Service. Chemical, man, chemical. Oh, uh, uh, magnesium oxide, Holmes. And what do we know about magnesium oxide? Uh, good electrical insulation properties at high temperatures and um, good thermal conductivity. Uh-huh. And add to that availability at the right price and you see why it is used. Allow me to draw a diagram. I'll show the tubular element. The most ubiquitous, Watson. There are five other types, but I'll mention these later. The resistance coil is solidly embedded in MGO within a tubular metal sheath. The powder acts as a thermal conductor as well as an electrical insulator. And you can select sheaths to operate up to about 850 degrees centigrade or to suit different corrosive conditions. Observe the cunning workmanship. Cold or non-heating lengths. Is this not contrary to the idea of a heating element? It is essential to have cool terminals, Watson, and to take them outside the heat zones. 
cool terminals, of course. Yes, wouldn't do for the connections to melt. Yeah, quite so. Are there many types of terminals, Holmes? Well, here are some of the terminal connections. Observe the flexible tail wire, brazed, welded or crimped to the cold lead. Alternatively, solid terminals like these. Peculiar nomenclature, Watson, and each with a purpose. Let's look at the variety of elements I mentioned earlier. Tubular, easily bent into loops, coils, hairpin bends. Sounds fun, Holmes. Yes, yes, they're the most versatile of the group, hence the most commonly used, Watson. Cartridge, well, we've already seen one of them in action. Mainly used for the localised heating of solid metal bodies. Can't beat a good cartridge in a tight corner, Holmes. Strip elements. Uh, strip, Holmes? Uh, for clamping to flat surfaces like platens, or for heating gases, as in ovens. Don't tell me, Holmes. These are ring elements. Precisely. Excellent for heating small areas, uh, glue pots and so on, or for spreading over larger areas. Now, band elements. Ideal for cylindrical surfaces, say, extruder barrels for plastics. There's no end to them, Holmes. There's no end to this one, Watson. Mineral insulated heating cables, ideal for wrapping round tanks, pipelines to keep things hot, or coiled to make a heater. Well, we've seen a solid being heated. Let's look at the heating of liquids. This is the metal finishing shop at Ford House's works of Lucas Aerospace Limited. What's going on, Holmes? Electroplating. What? Those floating golf balls? Oh, no, 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 no. Those are there to prevent heat loss. Electroplating? Well, I see no evidence of cutlery. Uh, no. These are all sorts of components in the aerospace and other advanced technology fields. Uh, which one is that? That is a gimbal. Of course it is. Uh, a gimbal. Electroplating liquids need heating. And here is a closer view of an empty tank showing the over-the-side heaters. Of course, there's no end to the liquids that can be heated, provided that you use the right metal. Any more solids, Holmes? Positively thousands. But I think this will appeal to you, Watson. Now, what would you say was going on here? Is this a trick question, Holmes? Certainly not. Well, uh, bread being wrapped. Aha, but did you notice the temperature? Uh, I, uh, well, uh, no. Let's have another look. Mm. Oh, 150 degrees centigrade. I say that's a bit different from the 800 degrees needed for titanium. Well, what they need here is a controlled heat, just sufficient to melt the wax on the paper at speed. See how neatly the elements are built into the process. Oh, I like that, Holmes. The staff of life. Uh, quite so. And uh, if you'll forgive the pun, Watson, now the stuff of life. That's the Birmingham Post. But I can't see any printing. You no, know, this is the central melting pot, and it holds 60 tons. Yesterday's news being melted down ready for today's. Those stereo plates weigh 56 pounds. What's the metal, Holmes? Lead with tin and a dash of antimony. In a way, this is like liquid heating. Uh, quite so. Heaters immersed in the metal, Watson, and brought over the side. What a convenient arrangement. The metal travels up those pipes, kept hot by mineral insulated heating cable, and lagged. You see the beauty of using electricity, Watson. No bulky fuel stores, no flues, no waste heat. Space economy, Holmes. Now, here's the mould made from the typeset. I can't believe it. It has to be dried, and they're using infrared, again electrical. It's then placed on the casting machine. The metal flows from the pipes into the pot where it's kept hot by immersion heaters. It's being poured in under pressure at 300 degrees centigrade. And now you appreciate why the mould has to be dry. Or oh, we should have had lead flying about all over the place. <laughs> Northwest frontier all over again, hey, Holmes? <laughs> yes, right. Now the plate is turned out. It's cooled and is then on its way to meet the paper. And presto, another edition. Once again, our old friends, the MSE, keeping everything hot. Hot off the press and hot onto the press, eh, Holmes? <laughs> it's a wonder that you've kept out of journalism, Watson. Oh. Incidentally, the Birmingham Post has given us a lifetime subscription. What heating problem did you solve at Starbridge Glass? That's Tudor Crystal, isn't it? Watson, your bulldog tenacity knows no bounds. Oh, sir. On with the reel, then.
Oh, this is something I'd love to be able to do, Holmes. You will certainly have the wind for it. Steady on, Holmes. Now, once the glass is shaped, it is annealed in this electric leer to remove the built-in stresses, Watson. A uh, leer, Holmes? A furnace, do you, Watson? Oh. This particular leer is a conversion job. It was built originally for another fuel, but was not giving the performance required. Tubular elements are fitted below the conveyor, Watson. Electricity means a consistently high performance, and there's no pollution inside or outside. Easy to provide different heat zones to give the right heating cycle. Aha, here we see the emergent products. They've just passed through the cooling section. Beautiful, Holmes. So the metal sheath element serves the craftsman too, as well as the technician. Very few industries can get far without heat, Watson. Once again, you were suitably rewarded, Holmes. To MSE. MSE? Metal sheathed elements, Holmes. Ah, indeed. To MSE. Hmm. Ah. Now, I'll give you a toast. To the ISE. ISE? The Industrial Sales Engineers. More pictures, Watson? Their methods are very like my own, Watson. And consequently, very sound. They start by ascertaining six requirements. One, product specification. Two, process specification. Three, properties of material to be heated. Four, production requirements. Five, operating conditions. Six, space available. I raise my dear stalker to these fellows, Watson. Unusual for you to be working with outside help, Holmes. Though I rate myself one of the finest electronic brains in Europe, I never ignore the advice of an expert in his own field, Watson. You have another brief, Holmes, from hmm? BOAC, London Airport. More flying machines, Holmes? These parts are rigorously tested under extreme conditions of pressure and temperature. Ah, they are preparing a test now. They will apply heat under high pressure, all finely controlled. Good Lord, millions of watts. My usual question, Holmes, where are the elements? As you can imagine, we can't study the interior of the heater whilst it's working, but uh, fortunately I have separate stills that I hope will elucidate. Nah, I can recognise them now. These are the element terminals. Uh, correct. And this side we see the nest of Inconel sheathed elements. Each one represents two kilowatts. Altogether, some 1,000 kilowatts of heat supplying air at 410 degrees centigrade up to pressures of 250 psi. I say, that really is hot air. Uh, this sort of thing can be used for other gases, where problems often arise to make other forms of heating impossible. Did you see the mathematics connected with this work? Once again, I shall travel happy to know these exacting tests are being continuously carried out, thanks again to MSE. I must confess I feel a bit left out, though. For the first time, you've taken on a case and kept me completely in the dark, Holmes. My dear Watson, all this information needs careful analysis. I'll need help uncovering all the possibilities. Literally thousands of applications. Solids, liquids, gases. They all come alike to the MSE. Anyway, Watson, a quick verbal teaser. Mm -hmm. Three headings to sum up the case. Using the letters MSE. Oh, uh, well, I write on your machine. Uh, let's see. Uh, M, multipurpose. S, simple installation. E, efficient and economical. How about that? Excellent analysis, Watson. Now, all this needs collating. Well, speaking of collations, surely Mrs. H's hot pot must be stone cold by now. Not if I know Mrs. H. I have the goodness to touch the bell. <laughs> yes, I... I must confess, a, a little calorific transference would not come amiss. I suppose this hot pot could be described as metal sheath, eh, Holmes? <laughs> In a very elementary fashion, Watson. <laughs> metal sheath elementary. Uh, oh, yes, yes, it's very good, metal sheath elementary. <laughs> I, I wish I'd said that, Holmes. <laughs> you will, Watson. You will. Oh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs>